Welcome everyone. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician here to host the Market Buzz. This show looks at weekly setups across the U.S. market. Using the tools available on stock charts, we'll look for long time frame trades. Please subscribe to my articles, Twitter feed, and gregschnell.com. So we have ourselves a China trade deal, I think. Uh, lots going on here this morning. So what we're going to, let me jump into some um, agenda items here. So it's obviously China is the news of the morning. Um, not to be lost was what happened on the Fed meeting. And then um, commodities have been rallying. I think uh, some of you might have noticed that uh, oil broke through $60 this morning and we've had uh, copper rallying. Uh, gold's been going sideways. We'll talk about that. But one of the things I wanted to do was discuss you know, when you have breaking news, how do I monitor that uh, with my stock charts platform? So I want to work through those charts and show everybody just what I would do. Um, I also want to show you the schedule, which is the Schnell schedule. And um, there's lots happening, including this morning, right after Market Buzz. We're going to flip over and do Market Vision um, over with Tom Boley in the Earnings Beats. And so the way to get there, this is Earnings Beat slash Market Vision slash... 2020 uh, but if you go to the zoom room number um, shown on the screen and I and our producer will put it in the chat room for you uh, so you can go grab it there as well um, it's also in a blog article I've written on don't ignore this chart under the skyworks article so if you scroll down to the bottom there's a link in there and then um, I'll be speaking at the Calgary CSTA um, on Tuesday December 17th uh, so look forward to that. And if you can come out to that, that would be great. Uh, Market Vision 2020 with Stock Charts Analysts is coming up in on January the 4th. So don't forget to register at marketvision2020.com. And um, when you when uh, that whole thing is rolling out, I think one of the most important um, things to think about, this will be all of the Stock Charts Analysts getting together to um, share some ideas for heading into the new year. Okay, so let's take this moment now and we're going to jump over into the charts and I'll just show you what's going on. So first of all, uh, really quickly, one of the things I like to monitor is this percentage column right in here um, as the market's breaking. And this is very helpful just to kind of get a quick snapshot what is actually working. Um, sometimes I'll just bang on the most active here to try and see um, if there's some certain stocks getting moved one way or the other. That isn't really kind of cluing in to me today. This this over here isn't working as well, but this was pretty clear. We had this big sudden surge to new highs, a pullback, and now we're kind of pushing up. Uh, you can quickly click on this bonds link, and the 20 year looks like it's going the other way. It actually, uh, the TLT jumped up and then pulled back. Uh, so we're gonna, I'll show you how I see that. Um, so you can offset that information very quickly, uh, but one of the things you can do is you can just highlight it, right? Bring it up, but you can see it opened higher and then has pulled back and now is starting to resume its climb. So we're sitting here just watching how this is going. So this is price up, these are yields down. So it's important to remember how this behaves differently. So again, you're buying a bond ETF. So price is going up as the yields go down. Okay commodities very quickly jump on the page here and you just see that um, gold is holding flat silver holding flat nothing really changing there's a sudden spike there what we had was the uh, the news came out that there was a deal so the market popped the news came out that well the deal was different than thought so the market dropped and now we've kind of been rallying around so gold's been oscillating quite a bit here um, and I'll show you how I also see that on my screen other screen and then cryptos I don't think they're that affected by it so I'm not going to go there but it's these three that I want to be very cognizant of uh, really quickly okay so I've, I've mentioned before that I have this screen set up off on the left of me and there's a, a refresh button here and as a pro member you can get it to refresh every five seconds um, at different levels uh, you can get uh, faster refresh rates but anyway uh, the big thing here is the VIX dropped on the news. The stock market bounced up to new highs. And as you can see now, we're this dotted line back to unchanged on the day. So um, pretty much where we started overnight. 
And this is my MACD for the S&P 500 on a 60 minute chart. And you can just see we're kind of topping out at the same level we were at before. Here's the NASDAQ composite. It jumped up. It's still holding above yesterday's close. So that's bullish. IWM is slightly below yesterday's close. It had made a new high yesterday morning. So that would be Thursday morning. And here we came up, tested that high and came up just a little bit short. One of the things to notice about the Toronto Stock Exchange, this blue line is is similar to the 20 day moving average. This is a 60 minute chart, uh, but you can see we've gone nowhere in two weeks. So we're not following the US up anymore. And one of the things to think about is the Canadian market usually um, gets weaker first. So the fact that it's no longer following higher, even as energy is moving higher, is kind of a surprise. Um, anyway, just one of those little things to start monitoring. Why isn't it following along? And then down here, I've got some commodities. So this is natural gas, and this thing jumps all over. It doesn't trend with, with the markets at all. Um, here is oil, and you can see oil jumped on the news and now has given that all back. Gold dropped on the news and now has regained what it started with, that little opening um, burst. So we'll see gold yesterday had a really uh, big swing, opened high, closed low, and then just kind of jaunt, jauntered sideways, I guess, um, walked sideways, and then closed the day just kind of turning up slightly. Now, the big thing to think about on gold is it's holding above its 20-day moving average, so that's one of the things I want to monitor, and, and the USO is doing the same. Here's TLT, so again, this is bond prices, and bond prices go up, yields go down. Um, in this case on the TLT, what we're watching for is as these, um, as the as the bond market drops, as TLT um, drops, the yields are rising. So what we should see here is um, this is starting to change direction. Um, obviously from the morning it gapped up, pulled back on the good news, then dropped, started to climb again. Um, so we'll see if this ends up turning higher, but you can see it continues to just hover around a flat 20 day moving average. And um, generally that's the center of the Bollinger Bands. Okay, and then here's UUP and that, that looks like a downtrend to me. So while UUP is trending down, what do we see happening in, in oil? It's trending up. So not a big surprise, but you can see we've been spending a lot of time here. We're about six or seven days now trying to get through this $60 level. Um, this is USO, the ETF, but on the real crude chart, we're trying to get through that $60 level. And this morning we spiked through it. Now we'll see where do we hold it on Friday afternoon at the close. So pretty important. Anyway, I have this screen up in my office on the left-hand side. And it's I, I've turned a monitor vertically. And so all of those show up at the same time. So when we scroll up to the top here, now what we can see is the S&P is starting to... Um, you know, was it a buy the rumor, sell the news event? And so far at this point, they're selling the news. So we'll see where the market ends up today. It looks pretty volatile. We also had the Fed meeting this week. So lots of things to consider. Okay, it is getting to that time of year where uh, we all want to go um, uh, off to Christmas. And what we can see here is we've got this uh, big uptrend here going on 26.5% this year. This is for the S&P. Now, if we change this over and make this the SPY, the SPY has the dividend yield included so that it jumps up to 28.5%. So for all of those people that uh, have financial planners or whatever, this is kind of the number you're comparing against because they'll be including dividends in, in your results. So um, in general, um, you know, it, it would be very difficult to outdo this number. It's been very um, rocky market in the middle here, but jumping up to 28.5% this year, that's a banner year, obviously. And so one of the things to consider is if the, you know, and a big part of that was coming up through um, the big drop in, in 2018. So anyway, uh, for, for comparing against uh, uh, financial planners portfolio. Um, this is going to be an interesting number to see how many of the financial planners were able to hold that up. Okay, I want to go back here. I'm just going to jump back one more time. So some of the other charts I just keep, um, oh, and I was going to show you how to set that up. So one of the differences here 
is this chart is based on percentage rather than price. And so here is performance, and this is out of the drop down list. If you use performance, what will happen is you get that percentage scale. Now, the second thing, um, in this case, I've turned off all indicators, oscillators, moving averages, everything, and I just want to see price, and then I draw the odd trend line on here. Obviously, we're in a nice uptrend. I would say if we started to test that uptrend, you know, maybe that would send us into a little bit of a correction. Um, not too worried about that just yet, and I'll explain why in a second. So what we have here is the SPY um, the QQQ and the IWM, so the three ETFs. And you can see that IWM broke out last, well, two weeks ago now. And last week had an outside bar. And this week looks like it's going to end up with some sort of a, I don't know if it'll be a doji. Um, but we've pushed up higher and we're trying to hold above last week's um, high. As long as that works and the market continues in this uptrend, that's very bullish. So nothing to, to complain about here. If we go back and look, we had the Fed meeting this week. And so I just randomly, not randomly, I I placed these bars on the chart, the vertical lines as to when the Fed meeting dates are. And you can just go to Google Fed calendar or whatever, and it'll tell you all of the Fed dates coming up. But it's roughly every six weeks. So we just had one on Wednesday. Our next one will be the end of January. And when we look at this, what I like to do is just, you know, sometimes it's marked meaningful tops, tops tops um, and then last time we had a rate cut so I marked it red this time we had no rate cut so it's back to blue and the the important thing I think here is just being aware and look at what the put call ratio is doing it's right at the bottom here so nobody's too worried about anything everything's smooth harmonious um, well the other chart to keep track of um, with these same things so these are all just either S&P 500 or s and uh, or SPY, but here's the S&P 500. And next Friday, we have options expiration. It's not only options expiration. The blue ones mark quadruple witching, and they always have extremely high volume. So when you look at these, so anyway, if you are if you plot these, what you'll find, I think, yeah, all four of those, um, this one might be the only one that got, pre got outdone. But the quadruple witching always has very high volume. And so they'll usually mark, you know, close to the highest volume candles of the year. Uh, I think the the critical thing to remember on uh, Fed meetings and on options expiration is they can be major market uh, turning points. So when I look at that, one of the things that always worries me, not worries me, makes me um, uh, check my work is the is the fact that we've got these fed meetings coming up or options expiration especially quadruple witching um again we can see them these options expiration days can be reversal days so where does the market sit well when we come back from commercial um i will cover off uh one of the other charts that i create for the gregschnell.com website and one of the one of the key indicators i use to help me figure out how bullish or bearish the market is and I'll share that with you when we come back from the commercial. Be right back. And what I've got up here is a pretty whippy looking graph. But what this graph is, it's one of the graphs that I use to help keep track of uh, market sentiment. And um, I'm, I'm trying to keep track of how strong the market is. And so the blue line here, this is, um, uh, I've shown the date here back to September 21st. And, and what I want to show on this chart is that uh, last year on the end of September, um, the market had a big pull back, pull down, and we had that 20% correction. So what you see here is this blue dot, and this is done every Friday, and I create this 
it goes along and what you can see is in uh, late December we were like at extreme opposites so this is how many um, this helps keep track of how many are bullish how many groups are bullish and how many groups are bearish and one of the things that that you'll notice is all of a sudden we went to this huge wide ranging swing by January the 11th and big bull market and we stayed up here really really high and then we pulled back down and then all of a sudden we had this market correction for three or four weeks and then up market correction for three or four weeks and then up and down so on october 12th right in here uh, the market corrected and i started i said you know some selective buying would be okay on october 12th this was october 19th and then off we went and we've been up here ever since one of the important things that i think is going on here is you'll notice how bullish we got here. We got less bullish, less bullish, and so far less bullish here. What I'd like to see is more groups start to get bullish. We're still definitely on a buy signal. These aren't looking any uh, anywhere near um, crossing, so that's good. What you can see, um, you know, the thing that puzzles me is why have we oscillated at such a low level, whereas back here we got so high. So the market can still go up just with less groups helping. Uh, the big thing I want to keep watching for is when that changes. So um, so one of the things I keep track of for the uh, members at stockcharts.com, they're at uh, gregschnell.com is my Schnell strength index and and that keeps track of how bullish we are and so so far the market's still very bullish and so as we come through the Fed meeting I'm like you know everything's holding up so I don't really want to be too worried about it and as the options expiration date approaches next week maybe this all of a sudden starts to soften and it, if that starts to soften that would add caution to my work so anyway that's one of the big benefits that uh, I can provide through grigschnell.com is keeping track of the overall sentiment and whether or not the market's starting to switch and if we pick um, you know this date right in here as we crossed below the middle of the graph um, this was literally October the third and everything kind of fell apart and so as long as we're bullish we're bullish and you want to be bullish and this just helps you I don't want to use the word time the market, but I want to use the word understand when you have a tailwind. And you right now we have a tailwind because so many groups are bullish and less groups are bearish. And we don't have any sort of um, reset or, or uh, breadth starting to narrow yet. Now maybe, and again, I do this on Friday at the close because I think weekend closes are pretty important. But this chart just helps me with my confidence so i mean if you wanted to worry this week we had reasons to worry we had the fed meeting we had um, china trade deal we had um, the good jobs report was it going to be sell the news all that kind of stuff well what is this chart saying it's just saying things are good and so um, as long as i have that kind of backdrop that really helps me um, kind of hold my positions or or be willing to put more positions on whatever I want to do. Anyway, hopefully that gives you some ideas uh, on how to uh, think about the market. Okay. So with that, let's go in and just, uh, I want to talk quickly about where we're at here. So here is the 10 minute chart. That other one that I showed earlier was a 60 minute chart. This just kind of shows how the intraday chop went and uh, I haven't refreshed. So let's put that in. Okay, so the market shot up and just so you can see the market shot up and then pulled back. This one on the left is SPY. This one on the right is um, NASDAQ 100. And, you know, look at the volume coming in here. So this has been very volatile recently. You can see compared to the last two weeks, look at how much volume has come in. And again, um, this is post fed so maybe this is going to start some sort of a trend change here now that we're seeing this volume acceleration so keep watching that nothing i i mean i wouldn't start worrying about it the one thing i find about my other indicator there is it helps keep track of um you know when a few groups are starting to drop off and normally uh, it takes one or two weeks for the market to start to actually lose its structural strength underneath I'm not sure if that's the right word for it, but um, it's breadth. At, so, so far, the breadth is fine. Okay, um, daily picture, we had a high PPO, we've pulled back, and now if we started to kind of crest here, we'd make a lower PPO. So what would we have? We would have positive 
or negative divergence where we have a higher high then we'd have a lower low in price kind of like we had in here higher high comes down we make a lower high in momentum and then we'd start to see the groups fall off now again this was the chart for I mentioned on that other chart, September 21st, and the only, you know, I can go back as far as you want, but the whole idea is um, when you, when the market started to fail right in here, my data was telling me the market was starting to fall apart. So down here on the lows, it was saying buy the, you know, start to buy this market. And by this candle right here, um, this first candle, this is, when it's saying, you know, we're on full bull mode. So this thing is lots of room to run. And we stayed up here. And then we had those pullbacks that I mentioned, those three crosses. Um, those were literally top, top, top. So it it does help me kind of follow the market. And I will say this wide swing in here in uh, middle or late October was starting to be um, more difficult. And then off we went to the races and it's been a pretty good run since. So hopefully uh, that just gives you an idea of some of the, the different ways we can look at the market. So just to wrap up, the one thing I, I do wanna talk about is last week or on Wednesday, not last week, but two days ago, last show, um, I mentioned that we could go in and just analyze the, the consumer staples sector and just see what was performing. And this was a pretty simple scan I ran. So to talk about market breadth, and, and we know that technology usually outperforms the um, broader averages. So let's go look. And what we have here is I've taken the group as the technology sector, and I'm looking for relative strength um, where, where the technology stock is higher. It's had a bigger percentage price change than the S&P 500 over the last 60 days. So from exactly 60 trading days ago, which one is higher and run that scan. And when I run that scan, so we could just do that and we're going to get our scan results up here on another tab. And you can see there's over 300 stocks outperforming uh, the S and P 500. So when we click on this um, chart or on this uh, list, we can go jump this, whatever, in some sort of a scan list, right? Um, so we'll replace an existing chart list we could select whatever i'm gonna i'm gonna just dump it into whatever scanning 75 breakout it doesn't matter it's just a, a scan dump place and i want to preserve the sort order because i've sorted it based on scooter ranking and then what will happen is it'll show up the strongest stocks first and now we can go look at these in a summary mode and again going into 10 per page this is giving us a daily chart and this corvo has been on fire and here's skyworks and i wrote about that in the don't ignore this chart article for friday um and that's also the one uh that's sitting there with a link so just to make sure everybody remembers here's skyworks points skyward and something special is tucked inside and that special is this link down here on the bottom right and you can click that link immediately following this show to catch my presentation with market vision which will be different than this presentation um so as, as I'm working through here, I mean, this chart's literally breaking out. It's a 5G technology um, chart, so really looking strong. And this chart has no volume, but it, I, I didn't um, kick out volume in the scan. Here's LAM Research, and this one's starting to, you know, it's been consolidating for a month. Looks like it's ready to start its next leg higher. Momentum suggests the same. I would usually look at these charts on a weekly. And again, how do we do that? We just go back up to the top here or any chart I could have taken. And what we wanna do is at the bottom of this page, you just go down and, and say apply style to all when you wanna change. So in my case, I'm gonna pick my weekly chart style and bring that up. And I've got these buttons over here on the left. And when I bring that up, you can see this, this uh, Corvo is breaking out to new highs. This stock looks like NVIDIA um, as it was ready to break out. It looks like it's just getting going. I don't know that, but um, it it is really making a nice thrust here. So I want to apply that style to all of the other charts. And I just hit apply down here. That'll change all of the charts that I was looking at in daily to weekly. And now when we go view all, you'll see every chart has the same um, settings. and with you know a couple of buttons we were able to change all the charts in the list rather than having to toggle between each one 
So if it was 60 minute you wanted to go look at or some sort of a daily format or something different, um, just set those up and then um, apply the style to all. So anyway, really quick, let's take a look at some of these nice technology names just to kick off uh, finishing off Friday. Um, again, the market's been on an unbelievable run, right? This stock is uh, from 40 to 110. So quite a move. Uh, LAM research is really nice. Here's STM microelectronics. You know, and what do all these names have in common? There's a lot of semiconductors in here. But you can see this one is just starting to break out to new uh, two-year highs and all-time highs. That's just bullish. Advanced micro devices um, pushing up nicely. Again, trying to get through this thirty-five dollars. Um, you know, I'm again after everything gets so extended here. I'm more interested in the ones that are just starting to improve. But if the overall market was going to start to correct based on my other work, then I would be. Um, you know, less comfortable adding to the position, but you know, the markets can wobble a little bit here, but so far the breadth is still very strong. So Taiwan Semiconductor, this one's been just a, a great move. Here's TDK and breaking out to new highs here. Um, this was 52 week highs would be back in this area here, but it's breaking out to new all time highs. Very bullish. Line Corp, I don't know what they do. That was quite a uh, move up. Um, software advanced semiconductor and again breaking out of a nice base new 52 week highs this chart's just getting started so that's that's a pretty look and again i've i've ranked them by the scooter ranking the scooter ranking is a sports ranking for stocks saying one has faster momentum than another um i think it's very helpful here's kla uh semiconductors kla corp um and it it's been on a run, had a little two-week pullback. Now we'll see, again, this momentum trend is starting to end on this stock. So if it started to weaken any more, I would let it go and let somebody else own it. I wouldn't um, wait to see if it had strength. It's got a really nice relative strength uptrend here. Anytime those end, I probably just want to take profits, especially in something that moves so quickly. Phototronics, wow, what a move this week. Um, I don't know if it's a buyout or earnings, but it was a big move. Huge volume coming in, biggest volume in two years. So that's nice to look at. Um, again, let's go back and how did I get this chart list? Very simple technology. We're going to scan the group and we're going to just compare it to the last 60 days of the S&P 500 and what is outperforming. So even though the S&P is up, what's doing better than that? And that's what this chart gives us an opportunity to look at. Okay, uh, I want to review a couple of things again, um, just talk about the next show briefly. Uh, let's go back to my PowerPoint here. So you're going to go into the Zoom room uh, number here, 147-026-900 at the top of the hour. And I'll be on there with Tom Boley and we'll be talking. Uh, we'll have a nice discussion. Um, Tom and I always enjoy time together. Um, and we'll be talking about our Market Vision 2020 and some of the things we'll use. But I'm going to share one of my favorite scans that um, I, if you thought this scan brought out some nice data, you should see uh, the one I'm going to present present right away here. Uh, just to wrap up, let's go back and look quickly at the overall market because it's oscillating a lot on this China news today. So again, we were, we broke out to fresh new highs. Let's just refresh this. And then um, broke out to fresh new highs. Now we're coming down. And the real question, are we going to hold this? Is this going to be a sell the news day? So um, I would just keep watching gently. Um, We'll, we'll see how the market absorbs this going into the weekend. Gold is, has retraced all of its losses and it's back near the highs of the day. And TLT is starting to improve again, saying uh, worry on, not worry off. Uh, so lots to cover off. On my uh, weekend presentation um, for, for GregChanel.com members, I'll obviously be covering everything off. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.